Hi, welcome to you all for the today's session on SOA training and the SOPA tool features. For more details in terms of various courses available with QA Masters, please visit our website qa-masters.com where we will have various automation courses along with SOA testing courses available. For today's session, we will have a walkthrough of various basic concepts of SOA followed by SOPA tool features. For this session, we will be having a high level overview of uh, SOPA tool features along with the basic concepts of SOVA. And we will have a initial uh, basic concepts in terms of what exactly is SOVA, service oriented architecture. So we have been discussing about in terms of what exactly is service oriented architecture. It is exactly an architecture style which supports loosely coupled services that will enable the business flexibility in an interoperable technology agnostic manner. So SOVA consists of set of business aligned services which are flexible enough and dynamically reconfigurable end to end business process which are completely based upon interface based service descriptions. So this is exactly of service oriented architecture. And what are the benefits? What is the need for having uh, service oriented architecture? What are the characteristics? So when we look upon this, there are various characteristics and various benefits. So loosely coupled. So loosely coupled in terms of the services that has been developed will not have any impact or a dependence on other services. And another feature is reusability. So the services that has been developed are reusable across different platforms and different environments. That is one unique feature and these services that has been developed are completely based upon open standards. So the open standards include W3C, WSI and purely this service oriented architecture has been implemented using the open standards. And another in silent feature is interoperability. The services that has been developed has uh, interoperable across different platforms and technical environments. So these are the various features and benefits which are having with SOVA. So how this SOVA has been evolved? So prior to this we are having a object oriented uh, programming development which includes modular development, procedural programming and remote procedure calls. From this it has been evolved to SOVA. So the disadvantages which we are having with object orientation or the complexity which we are having with object orientation has been made, uh, has been uh, met those objectives by using the service oriented architecture. And service oriented architecture consists of various components which include web services and uh, business process management, enterprise application integration and different uh, in terms of various web services how to communicate with each other using a middleware integration platform called enterprise service bus and business services in order to define or implement various web services or end-to-end -end business process scenarios. This is how the SOA has been evolved. So now we will discuss about what exactly is web service. So these web services are based on the concept of SOA. These services are self-describing and these are modular business applications which expose as a business logic and this has been exposed over the internet through programmable interfaces. So the web services is going to be exposed using a language called web services description language and this web services description language contains the operations that are being performed by a particular web service and for each operation what are the input and output messages, what are the data types it will support and what are the different messages it can accommodate those things it has been clearly mentioned and detailed up in the web service description language. So the organizations that are going to uh, implement and will go for service oriented architecture, they are going to segregate their functionalities into various web services and each web service will be exposed on the internet as a web service. So these web services as they have been exposed on the internet, they need to be secure enough and they need to be scalable enough and they, those should be loosely coupled and those should be platform independent of the nature and they should be accessible to the everyone irrespective of their authentication and access details and the one more thing is that they need to be interoperable among heterogeneous applications. So this is how the web services has been involved. So how this web service will communicate and what is the flow involved, what is the communication mechanism involved. So we will deal in terms of there are various components in terms of how the web service plays a major role. We are having the service provider 
the service consumer and the service registry so when we talk about service provider so this those are the actual uh, organizations which they are going to implement are responsible for developing and deploying the web services and they are go going to define these services and publish them with the service registry so the service registry we can call it as a collection of services where the respective web services are available and they can be located upon so this contains using the service registry the consumers or the end users what we will do is we will um, in terms of identifying a particular service and be able to access that service and once the service has been identified and we are going to access it and we start communicating with the service provider suppose for example we are having a banking application which deals with service oriented architecture there are various uh, customers in terms of existing customers or the new customers so different functionalities like uh, new account opening and uh, cash withdrawal and uh, cash uh, um, deposit as well as uh, funds transfer we can call it this different functions as different operations and bank is going to expose this related functionalities as web service and the end users the service consumers we ourselves can make use of them and we can do a online transactions using the web services behind it and we can do lot of activities which the services are interrelated and interconnected in times of so logging to your account and making a cash withdrawal and funds transfer and various transactions which are related to your account so this is how the interaction or the communication flow happens between the service provider consumer and the registry uh, during the entire process flow of web services so now we will discuss in terms of as part of the course content which we are going to provide as part of qa masters so what are the topics we are going to cover as part of sowa so initially we will have a so introduction so in terms of uh, what exactly is sowa how the sowa has been evolved why sowa is required and we will discuss about uh, the differences between the, the traditional architecture and the uh, sowa architecture and the characteristics benefits and in detail in each of these topics sowa governance and all those things and we will discuss about each of the topics in detail of various components of sowa for example we have been discussing about web services and in web services how the visual soap and what are the different types of web services like synchronous asynchronous rest based web services so best web services are there and we will discuss about from basic concepts to advanced concepts like what exactly is middleware what are the middleware suits available and what are the advantages of having a middleware and what is a service registry and what are the business rules and how the business rule engine plays a role and uh, uh, how the rules has been playing a vital role in sowa and business processes and business process execution language and the role of this bepel in service oriented architecture and messaging so what exactly is messaging there are java based messaging and various topics and queues so as part of the messaging these topics we are going to discuss in detail as part of our course uh, duration and coming to this non functional aspects like security so so security how the security has been implemented at the web service level and at the message level as well as at the transport level and performance performance is one key aspect in terms of sowa so how the performance is going to be implemented and what are the areas the performance has been concentrated right from web service level to integration level at the esp and from the message queues so these are the topics in terms of functional and non functional aspects and we will deal with sowa testing so how is sowa testing how exactly is different from traditional testing or a functional testing to automation testing so and what are the approach and the challenges involved life cycle and the different types of sowa testing like from functional and integration business rules mq testing and sowa non functional testing and the tools we will also discuss about various sowa testing tools that are widely available in the market right from open source to tools to commercial vendors and what are the benefits of the differences of using various tools this is this will detailed about the course contents as part of sowa testing and as part of the trainings we will also have a um, sessions in terms of soap ui so this is one of the open source tools and uh, what is the overview of soap ui tool and uh, what are the testing types in terms of sowa supported by this tools in terms of service first functional testing 
services security testing jms testing and mocking mocking of the services and the performance coming to load tests and uh, exporting in terms of statistics data how to do a compliance and interoperability testing in terms of visual level soap level and working with uh, various visuals operations and requests working with messages and in terms of security how to authenticate soap requests and how we can deal with headers and attachments validating the soap responses so reporting in terms of what the kind of report the soap ua tool will uh, provide support and the various plugins that are supported by this tool like intel gnet blinks and all those things and what are the limitations or challenges with soap ua tool those things we can discuss in detail as part of our training sessions now we will have a uh, overview of what exactly is soap ui and in terms of uh, various features that are being provided by soap ui at a high level we will be having a five this is the um tool which that will have a overview in terms of after opening the soap ui tool so you can see the file menu and we can see the tools tab and which contains the various tool integration supported by soap ui tool and you can see the initially the activity which we need to do is uh, after opening the soap ui tool you need to create your own workspace so workspace we can call it as an area which we need to have it in terms of uh, Uh, creating your own projects creating your own test suits and creating the test cases with that so uh, we can create our own workspace we can call it as a uh, my workspace we can call it as and we can click on okay and uh, it can be saved in a particular location of your choice and you can create a new soap you project within that and this is the project uh, window which will provide the project name and uh, visual initially you can provide a url of the particular visual or you can download it that visual and you can specify the path of that visual where you can create a test suit and you can create a mock service and you can create a click on so these are the various uh, um, uh, features which we can say that uh, um, the visual uh, contains how to create and all those aspects now we will see how to create a visual file and uh, how to create the tests for a particular visual file we can see here uh, temperature conversion is the visual which contains the operations of converting from uh, celsius to fahrenheit and fahrenheit to celsius here we can create uh, uh, by the default choice you can create test suit and mock service and click on the okay button so it will uh, display the what are the operations that a particular uh, visual which you have selected and you can select either all of them you can select by default a load test as well and you can click on okay button and it will generate default test suit name you can create of your choice or you can go ahead with the default generated one and even for the mock service you can follow the same procedure in terms of uh, uh, which operation you need to create a mock service or and which port and click on uh, okay button to proceed further it will uh, specify the default name to create a mock service just click on okay button and this is how it will create the test suit for various operations along with the uh, mock service as well as the load tests now we will see uh, how this test suit has been created you can see here test case for each of the operations uh, open one uh, test case for example celsius to fahrenheit and you can see in the window the default soap request that has been generated which contains the envelope followed by the header and the body portion in the body portion we will have in the actual request which contains the celsius parameter and in this for this you need to execute in terms of what the kind of celsius uh, value we are going to get for a particular value and you can see what the fahrenheit we will get it and provide the parameter value and click on submit button this will take you to the location of the ever hit the request and submit the request to the specified url and it will provide the appropriate soap response so for the celsius 65 the appropriate uh, fahrenheit is 149 so accordingly you can see uh, uh, how to get um, responses in terms of fahrenheit to uh, celsius and all those things and similarly you can see can see here foreign heat how to generate foreign heat to celsius we have seen 149 as the foreign heat that has been generated for celsius 65 now we will see for 149 foreign heat we are going to 
we we'll get uh, the same uh, Celsius or different one. So this is the uh, 65. So in this way we can ensure that uh, the various valid and invalid combinations can be executed for a particular uh, web service, and uh, we can see the invalid combinations in terms of so fault messages and all those things. Now we'll have a look of um, uh, what are the preferences window and how to save those preferences. We will see. So this is the global settings which we need to do while uh, creating a workspace and while creating a project and all those things. You can see here HTTP settings, and you can see the proxy settings. Proxy settings contains the host, uh, which uh, along with the port details as well as the your credentials in terms of username and password. Followed by the SSL settings in terms of your web services are secure enough and security mechanisms has been implemented. You need to uh, give the key store certificates and all those things. There are we'll be having visual settings as well, which followed by so what are the kind of uh, uh, how the type of visual settings we need to do as well. There are another important feature in terms of tools. So what are the, how the SOAP UI supports integration with various tools. So as we have been discussing, SOAP UI is actually uh, developed for uh, development activities to generate the web service, and it has been over the period it has been matured enough to be implemented and to be used widely for testing purposes. So th that is the reason we have seen that various tools features that has been provided support with the SOAP UI integration like JBuzz, Access, Ant, JDK, Apache TCP mod. So you can, likewise, you can uh, provide all those relevant settings for your required, and click on OK button, and um, you can go to File menu again and save the preferences. So this way, we can ensure different uh, activities that we can do using a SOAP schedule for particular web services. So uh, with this, uh, the overview feature of SOAP tool has been completed, and I would like to thank each one of you for uh, your time. And for more details in terms of uh, course contents and various details, please reach us at training at qa-masters.com or visit our website at www.qa-masters.com.